I wanted to talk about another charlatan in archaeology and it's a character that some of you may have come across. He's a chap by the name of George Nash. He's uh, apparently been a doctor of archaeology and um, a professor of archaeology. And uh, my dealings with George Nash have been on two occasions. The first time it was for a conference that I'd organised for Archaeology Cymru. And the year, I think, was 1997. And he'd come along and... He'd done this lecture for us and and what happened was that the well he left left behind a load of slides because he was writing a book at the time with Logiston Press. And that as far as I that as far as I was aware that that was it. He didn't want the slides back and that that, that was where we left it. Anyway, the intermittent dealing with him was when a discovery was made in Catal Cave on the Gower, and it was made public that there was this cave art at Catal Cave, and it was common knowledge where it was in archaeology. So I had gone to this cave in 2000 and 2012 and um, and I'd gone in there and it seemed that the cave art had been um, you know somebody was trying to sort of hack out of the rock so I I made it public directly to the newspaper where the location was, knowing full well that the establishment would react and put a cage on it and block access. So that's exactly what happened. And it meant that you know, nobody, nobody's going to be able to steal it. So that made me a bad name in archaeology, but uh, to get things done in archaeology to protect sites, you've got to reveal the exact spot and then... The fraternity panics and they actually do something. They should have been protected in the first place before it was damaged. So this is sort of, this all comes down down to um, George Nash not really understanding that uh, if this is going to be made public, then it needs to be protected, which is something he didn't do. He was on his glory trip. Another intermittent time was after the event i'm going to tell you um a discovery was made in the valleys and i've, I've actually written about this but uh it, it's some somewhere in the valleys and he had identified a cut mark on a stone however the other detail on, on the stone he completely missed now this is a guy who's supposed to be able to identify stuff on rocks so he missed um you know, some other sort of carvings on the rock, which were really, really obvious, which we discovered. And uh, sort of it, sort of then I started to doubt this guy's professionalism. And the guy's professionalism is completely in disarray when I say this. It was an archaeology Cymru trip. It was to North Wales. And we were visiting prehistoric sites and Roman sites in North Wales. And it was Bacchlody the Garas, um, the, the sort of giant's apron burial chamber, Bacchlody the Garas. And the burial chamber is really badly presented. What they've done is put a concrete dome above it. And it's, it's like you know, the other stones in there are sort of decaying because of the dampness in there now. Um... Anyway, we, we had permission off Cadu to visit there 
um, we needed to collect a key from the local shop on Anglesey, which we did. It was a big, long key, it was. And it was an excursion. So the year itself was 2000, and I think it was 2015 or 16, one or the other. And um, so we went in there, and it was all barricaded off. And we had the key from Caddy. We had permission to be in there. We, we were the party that had permission to be there that day when we were there. We we were the ones who were the license holders to go in there. Permission from Caddy and all, all the rest of it. So when I say cordon, cordoned off, you, you sort of go down a little corridor and there's a concrete roof above you and there's this metal grate. And in front of the metal grate was all this sort of plasticky stuff. And inside, you, I could hear voices. And so I started twiddling about with the key on the lock. And then this guy should come to the gate. And uh, he recognised me and it turned out to be George Nash. Right. So I said, look, you know, we've got permission to be here. What are you doing here? And I said, oh, um, oh, all right. Um, they had made a copy of the key. Yeah. They had made an illegal copy of the key to go into this chamber. I actually held the official key. He had made an illegal copy of the key. He had no right to be in there. Right. So he, he had two, two of his colleagues. And we went in there and it was like a bad atmosphere. He said, oh, oh, hi, Carl James. Uh, really patronising and condescending. And obviously he wanted out us out of there as soon as possible. So, so anyway, it, it was very menacing. And the, the two females that he was with, he, he spoke to them like dirt anyway. He was like this uh, really masculine sort of, chauvinistic pig sort of thing he treated these two women in there like absolute dirt right uh because they were women my he looked down on them he actually looked down on the women in my party as well and they told me afterwards that the way he had actually treated them was abysmal because they were women he's a chauvinistic pig um and you know so the women actually left, and I was left with a couple of the guys from the party, I think three guys from the party, um, and only he was talking away to one of the guys, Roger. And, and one thing I noticed, right, was that there was a stone that he was taking rubbings off. A sandstone that he was taking rubbings off, right? And... He had like a um, um, a transparent sort of um, tracing paper. Well, actually, I think it was just like transparent plastic. But anyway, he actually blue tacked them on, right? And onto this sort of stone that was protected, scheduled ancient monument, he was... So there was blue tack right and i looked down on the ground and one bit of blue tack actually had the, some of the stone on it right so every time he'd be putting blue tack on there it'd be taking bits of the surface off which is actually an offense and the schedule ancient monuments act so he was damaging the stone and he was taking a rubbing off there off there which which and uh and and i was absolutely appalled I was absolutely appalled. Two two other colleagues and him, supposed professional archaeologists, were damaging the archaeology physically in front of us. Blue tack with, and it was horrific. Um, and no care was taken to do the rubbings off this stone properly. You know, there are other ways you could have done it. You, you could have, uh, you you could have had the plastic sheet around the back take the pack of plastic sheet tight and therefore you would not have be taking any of the surface off with any blue tack or any you could have done it easily right and protected the stone so there was a bad atmosphere in there 
he was really condescending talking down to me and so I shook his hand I wish I never did right and I walked out right say goodbye and walked out anyway I, I, I sort of I, I locked him back in there with with my key with the Cadu State's key not his key right so I went to go off right and I hung around there and and it had all gone quiet and I just hovered and then I heard because one of the guys Roger right because Roger had gone off then and two of the women said, or oh, one of the women said, or oh, to um, George Nash. Oh, George, who was that guy you were talking to, the elderly one? And he referred to Roger. Oh, that silly old fart I was talking to. Yeah, he's he's nobody. He was really slagging Roger off. Um, yeah, I've come across him before, you know. Um, he's just this old guy that talks. He doesn't know anything about archaeology. And I, I, I thought, right, well, okay. Bastard. Roger had been one of my students for years. I wanted to go in there and knock the bastard out, but I didn't wish I had now. Anyway, do you know what I wanted to do? The next bit is shocking. What I wanted to do, right, is I, 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 wanted, I wish I had another padlock, so I'd have padlocked the bastard in there, right? It was on a Saturday and Sunday. He could have screamed and whatever to get out. Wouldn't be able to get hold of Cadu. Brilliant. Then... The, one of the women said, oh, who was the other guy? Oh, Carl James Langford. Um, he's trouble, he is. Um, he, he's uh, best to uh, best to avoid him. Um, and uh, he's not an archaeologist. And, you know, he doesn't know anything about archaeology. And he was really slagging me off. And I was just standing there thinking... Right. One day, I will be getting my own back at you. And uh, I was just, what a two-faced, slimy, dirty little character George Nash is. You know, um, horrible, horrible man. And do you know what? Hopefully he gets to hear this recording. And if he does, George Nash, at least I can face you to call you a prick. Because that's what you are. You 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 know very little about protecting archaeology. You don't know much about archaeology. You can't identify archaeological stuff in the field. And you just take and take and take other people's research work. And I know another archaeologist whose work you stole from, right? So George Nash, right? Everyone avoid George Nash, don't have anything to do with him, right? He's a con man, merchant and a charlatan. This is from Carl James Langford. At least I've got the face to face you. You talked about me behind my back. This is the troublemaker. Thank you very much, George Nash. Anyone else who's come across this slimy little turd, George Nash, just uh, put it in a comments box and... Um, and I'd like to know more about him if you've ever come across him. Don't buy any of his books. He's he's just bogus. And he used to claim he was a professor of archaeology, but with Bristol University. No, 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 no. He couldn't. He couldn't teach archaeology. Um, he just couldn't teach it. He doesn't have the ability. Thank you very much. Keep watching. Keep supporting. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and press the blue button, join. Thank you very much. Good. Got that off my chest.